Previously, I posted a video from a Tackstar microphone. It's a studio vocal microphone. You can use it for overheads or guitars, acoustic guitars. You can really use it for anything because it's extremely transparent and it has qualities that many microphones don't have. Uh, many microphones specifically within this price range. I had a Sony C800G that was just masterful, but that microphone cost around six, seven thousand dollars now, and it was stolen from me, and I haven't been able to replace it. I did have another three thousand dollar Groove Tubes Model Three uh, that was stolen from me, and then I went with a couple other microphones. And I've kind of gone through a myriad of microphones to see which ones are out there that are worth a flip. In the process, I ended up buying a Tackstar drum, all-in-one drum mic kit. And the Tackstar mic kit was actually really good. Uh, it was extremely surprising. I was very surprised how well it was built, how it felt. It was solid steel and sonically are just as good, ironically, it's hard to even believe, but they're just as good, if not better, than my Sennheisers. Of course, I have multiple Sennheisers, and I also have some Shure mics, but that I use both here in the and in, in the studio and live. Uh, I have a couple Audix, I have some AKGs, but the Tax Stars just amazing to me, and the price point that they came in. You can buy one Tom mic from Sennheiser, and it will cost as much as the whole kit of the Tax Star mics. Anyway, I posted a video. You can actually see that online. And so when I came to looking at buying another vocal mic, just to see what was out there, and then I said, oh, you know, the Tackstar drum mics are really, really good. So let's see how good they are in the vocal range. So I went on and I did some research and I found the one that most people gave like either four and a half to five stars on. And so I ordered this mic and I didn't know what to expect. After I got it in, <laughs> you can see the video. Ironically, it was delivered out by the main road. And the main road is a football field away from the front door of my home. I couldn't find the microphone anywhere, but FedEx said that it was delivered at the gate. Well, I don't have a gate. So I was kind of, <laughs> I was like, okay, what's going on here? Uh, here we go, it's gonna be another claim that I was going to have to go through. Well, I started walking down to the road. I'm thinking, let's just see what the deal is. Maybe it was delivered at someone else's house. Well, ironically, it was at my house, but it was like sort of in a little gully uh, where the water drains from. And so I grabbed it and I was grateful it wasn't raining that day. I brought it inside, I hooked it up and needless to say, I was floored absolutely floored by this microphone. I hooked it up and I did the review on the microphone and I could hear the microphone, but I didn't actually allow others to hear what I was hearing. So, and I had a, another studio partner friend of mine that said, so let me guess, you're just expecting that everyone just takes your word for it. <laughs> and so I said, no, I'm not. I'll, demo it later. I won't just give it a review. I'll actually demo the mic later. So today was my mom's birthday. I had her sing Black Velvet. Then my niece was over here and she actually has a really good voice too. And I had her sing. I said, pick whatever song you want. And she picked, ironically, Piano Man. My mom has a quality to her voice and then my niece has a quality to her voice. Both of them are similar and yet different. I'll probably post my mother's singing after this one, but for now I'm gonna stick with my niece and you can hear the quality of the microphone. I used very little compression. I used very little EQ. Uh, I used the same EQ on my niece as I did my mother. I ended up using no reverb, just some delay, and I warmed it up with compression, and I didn't even record it with a mic pre. There's no mic pre 
on this voice. It's literally just going straight into my recording software, which is Pro Tools. So the DACs are high end, but that's about it. There's no mic pre, uh, just a little bit of EQ and uh, nothing else to warm it up other than I just put a little bit of compression on there and it's still digital compression. So this will give you an example of how it sounds. Okay, again, I did not expect for her voice to sound like this because she has a soulful voice, but she was trying to sing it straight. She has a really good vibrato. And um, here, I couldn't even hear the vibrato. So it's nine <laughs> I guess she was trying to sound like Saturday. Billy Joel or similar, but she the still sounds very commercial on it. So. There's an old man sitting next to me Making love to his tonic engine I do need to say this. The track, it was one of those karaoke tracks, and it was kind of cheesy. So I actually spent more time trying to EQ the karaoke track. Uh, it was a bit noisy, and there wasn't enough presence, and yet there was no depth in the low end. So I was fighting that, trying to make the low end a little bit richer and the high end more crisp without making it still honky. I'm not a big fan of honking high mids. So I spent more time EQing the track than I did her voice or anything else. Um, but I think I got a decent EQ on it and a decent blend with her voice and the track. She's actually sounding very nasally, and I was surprised about that. You have to remember that a woman singing, she has a, you know more upper mids and highs to her voice than a man does. A man has a much richer voice, so usually in the studio you have to EQ the microphone to be richer. I almost didn't have to do anything with this microphone with her. This is just kind of how it sounds. And I was extremely impressed again. Okay, let's keep listening. It's a son, can you play me a memory? I'm not really sure. So you can hear the transparency in the microphone. What, again, really surprises me is that she sang it with almost no vibrato. Uh, she, it was like she was fighting the vibrato. Uh, she actually has a very nice, smooth vibrato. So it was very weird me listening to it. I was just grateful to get her to sing. It was nice to have her on tape. All right, let's listen. La -da -da. One of the things that was extremely unbearable for me was the piano was as thin as it gets. Uh, again, it's just a karaoke track, but the piano was so thin. Uh, it, Billy Joel's live piano is not like that. This one is just honky-tonk, real tinny piano. I wish I could have separated it out and EQ'd the whole track separate, but that's okay. Again, this is just for the microphone. So let's listen. Now John at the bar is a friend of mine. He gets me my drinks for free. He's quick with a joke. Ought to she sang that very straight. Yeah, uh, my niece is half Dominican, and uh, so she has a lot of Latino in her blood. She does not sing real straight like that, she, and she doesn't sing with less emotion. Usually it's much more, uh, and 
I'm going to, in a future video, I'm going to have to do another song where you actually hear how soulful her voice is or, and can be. But, uh, I mean, she's still, she's singing good, but she's singing much, almost more like Billy Joel than she is her voice. All right, let's, let's listen. Light up your smoke, but there's some place that he'd rather be. He says, Bill, I believe this is killing me as a smile runs But you can hear the transparency in this microphone. That is an amazing quality. It almost doesn't happen like that under any circumstance. So it's very, very rare that it's like that. All right, let's keep listening. Now Paul is a real estate novelist. Who never had time for a wife. Again, no vibrato. Almost a wobble, no vibrato. And uh, the diff difference between a wobble is a wobble is like, yeah, <laughs> I can't do it naturally. So I have to force myself and, and hold my throat and do it. Um, a, uh, a vibrato is something that, that's natural, that comes from breathing properly. Um, she has a great vibrato, but she just didn't do it here. So it's, again, it's funny that I'm listening to it like this. And he's talking with Davy, who's still in the Navy, and probably you will be a fly. So yeah, again, you can hear the transparency in the mic. You can hear the full range in her voice. This shows you the quality of this microphone, of this Tax Star. And this Tax Star microphone, I mean, you know, $100, $120. I just, I will definitely be buying more of these microphones. This is politics as the businessman slowly gets stoned. Yes, they're sharing a dream. something that almost every studio will want within their mic cabinet. Sing us a song, you're the piano man. Sing us a song tonight. Well, we're all in the mood for a melody. And you've got us feeling all right. So I hope you got a lot out of this video. Again, if you want to see the first video, you can go back and look at the other one. And um, you can see the review that I gave about it back then. I'm thoroughly impressed with all of their microphones so far, but especially this one. They do have a TAC Star TAC 35 and a 45 and a 55, I believe. And um, there's not a whole lot of difference. I did hear someone do a review where you could hear the difference in the microphones. The biggest difference is, you know, as you get into the more expensive one, there, you know, it's got a roll off and, uh, you know, has a couple other features that the other one doesn't have. And it's a great mic. Everyone gave it great reviews. It's a pretty good crowd for a Saturday. And the manager gives me a smile Cause he know that it's me they've been coming to see To forget about life for a while When you put this next to almost any kind of high-end microphone, it shines. Uh, this microphone, I would use this over the U47, U87. I would use it over some of the best of the best microphones depending on the circumstance. Anyway, all right, so I hope you got a lot out of this one, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't post a audio